me from Oh You're Lovely, where we carry the largest selection of wood flowers in the United States. Do not adjust your screen. It's totally normal. <laughs> there is another person standing next to me. This is Maggie, also referred to as Maggie number two. She works in our wholesale uh, side of things, but she also is amazing at making bouquets and arrangements. And today, oh, you guys, are you in for a treat? Today, it's we are going to, it's a big one. We're working <laughs> on, I'm not even gonna say it yet, but we're working on probably the most requested bouquet tutorial that we have yet to do. So, yeah, let's, let's roll it. another tutorial as stated earlier the lovely Maggie number number two, two is here with us <laughs> to show us dun, 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 a cascade bouquet the cascade is here the cascade a full <laughs> no no quick little hacks that I've shown I've done those twice if you're interested in this once you watch this and you're like girl that's too much we have other tutorials with already pre-made types of greenery but this one we're gonna do the full thing we're gonna we're gonna put it all together for you. So, as you guys know, a lot of our tutorials, um, we kind of show the quick supplies and go through everything. We're, this is gonna be an in-depth tutorial. So, get your snacks, get yourself a beverage, and we're gonna start the Cascade Bouquet. All right, so the first supply that we're going to talk about is the holder itself because not all of these holders are made the same, but they all work very similar. They're just shaped a little bit different. So, Maggie, take it away. Yes. So, um, the holy grail of bouquet holders for a cascade is going to be your angled bouquet holder. And as you can see, flat on, straight on, it's still got the angle. So the bride, when she holds it, it's very comfortable. Um, and it's very easy to work with. These have been hard to find. So, um, not too long ago, uh, as of this video, Stephanie was able to go into Hobby Lobby and found these that have, are more rounded. What was that? They look like an ice cream cone. They do look like an ice cream cone, but they're more rounded. And basically, you're gonna use the same principles to apply everything, but you're just gonna hold it at a bit of an angle. And we'll talk about the straight down hanging. The other thing I was going to say is that there are different sizes of these yes. as well. And at, but at the time that we're filming this, inventory is all over the place with things. Mm -hmm. So when you're watching this, this might be available now. And if it is, I would probably suggest using that one. Right, right. And it's just going to be easier. It's a little bit easier. Um, and the last thing is what you want inside the foam itself. Yes. You want it to be craft foam. So you want it to be made specifically for dry or artificial flowers, um, as opposed to Oasis is one brand of a wet foam, which um, is what they use for fresh flowers that's intended to be wet, um, and it will crum it will start to crumble and you'll- When you use it dry. When you use it for dry things, yeah. so. All right, that is that. The now, holders. on to the greenery. All right, the next supply we're gonna talk about is greenery. Now sit down, relax. There's, there's a little bit we want to discuss as to why we're picking what we're picking and how it all works. It's going to look like a lot of greenery. And, and it is. Cascades take a, a <laughs> decent amount of greenery. But there's a rhyme and reason for everything that's picked. And then it all comes together in the end. So we're going to run on through everything and explain what is what and why we use it and how we use it. All right. So I'm going to let Megan number two take it away. Perfect. Um, so the first one we're going to start with that you're gonna to wanna to have in your inventory is a big, flat, leafy green. This is gonna kinda of really serve as the backdrop for the other fillers and greenery that come in. Um, so as you can see from the side, it's pretty flat on, the leaves are bigger. This is gonna cover a lot of space, um, so that way, like as you layer other things, you're not gonna have these big gaping holes to fill. Um, this is gonna really set the backdrop for your piece. Kind of your bed and your starting point for exactly. everything. Exactly. Um, the and next, do you want to say what that itch is in the shop? Because we all of the okay. we're showing is things that you can find at ohyourlovely.com. Yes. So this is um, our ficus. Um, we have it cut down right now. We did a bunch of prep before this video because while this is going to be lengthy and in depth, 
We didn't think you needed to see all of the, the details. We'll talk about all of how we prepped everything. Yes. But yeah, you guys didn't need to sit for Ye all, yeah. of, the all of that. Um, but so it's our ficus. You can also use things like um, uh, silver dollar eucalyptus, anything that's got kind of a full base and isn't going to be too much volume. So you can set that kind of flat layer in the back and build up off of that. Um, and another thing to note is you will interchange all of these things. Like we're not building a seven layer dip. <laughs> we're not that having each so layer be exactly distinct. They will combine with one another, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of like where you're going to start and how you're yeah. going to go for The starting of the building and then you bring back some things so that they're mixed in. Together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now the next type of greenery you're going to want is something that's still leafy, um, as you can see, but has a bit more volume. It can have smaller leaves, similar size leaves, but it's going to bring in, as you can see, it's not flat again. It's a, and it's a little bit more like compact as far as all of this, right. where that ficus is pretty like spread out. Right, all right. Leaves. And this is our seeded eucalyptus. Yes. Um, and you can also use things like spiral eucalyptus, something that's gonna bring in like a bit more volume um, and fill out a space. Again, because we've set that back layer, we are gonna want to like, actually wrap, start rounding and exactly exactly yeah, not have a flat cascade exactly so the next type of greener you're going to want is something that um, starts to change the color starts to, to bring in all of your color story into one because if you just do one color greenery throughout um, it could look a little bit flat or if you're trying to bring in some vibrant colors or you just want some some changes there This is when you start to bring that up. So it all ties together. So it all ties together. Exactly. So for mine I am going to bring in a blush eucalyptus um, Again, this does have the volume that we're gonna that I love to see um, But it also starts to bring in some of my color story. Yeah. Now Stephanie on the other hand um, when we get to the flowers, she's going with a different color story altogether. And I already have quite a bit of kind of blush in there, exactly, so I don't exactly. need it, it'll overpower it. So for her, she's going to go and bring in some of her lighter toned eucalyptus. Um, as you can see, this is very different from the seeded eucalyptus, and it's going to just help to bring volume into the piece. And give you a, a little bit more of a dimension and color so it's not all one straight. Kind of, color. we want some different colors and midtones and stuff, stuff and things like that. So exactly. yeah, that's going to be great for that. Exactly. Now the next one is one I think Stephanie and I both love a lot, <laughs> and this is when you bring in your textured greens. This is when you're changing from a leafy, um, and you're starting to bring in the little, little bits and bobs that make it very interesting. So for this, we have quite a few because that's just how we roll. Like um, we have our Italian Ruscus which is a favorite. And just so you know, if you're working with blue tone green or yellow tone greenery, this stuff, magic. It's magical and it works with basically every color yeah. story. I It starts to just pull the color story yes. and then it just blends really well. It's yeah, it's magic. Exactly. We also have some angel vine and this is um, in that medium green tone. Yeah. So this is also bringing some color differential. Yeah, yeah exactly. But just a completely different texture and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the last, well, of not the, the last, of the, the last is technically just texture, is uh, these Dusty Miller sprays. Now these come on a larger piece um, that Oh Your Lovely sells in the shop. And for these, I just wanted these little bits that have that like crazy so just, kind of leaf shape. So we popped it off, and then glued it onto it on the there. stem, and those are ready to add that fun texture. Now, last but not least, mm. this is where the excitement comes in. <laughs> Although it's been exciting all the way. It's totally been exciting. But, <laughs> but this is where you're gonna bring in your colorful bits and bobs. Um, we stuck to a more like neutral, like the white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but as you can see, like there's a lot of fun little bits. Now these, we'll probably put them in before the flowers. You can add them after the yeah, flowers. Absolutely. Um, but it's just the colorful things that are gonna make your arrangement pop. I will say, if you're gonna be like when you do this part, leave just like a couple on the side 
Mm-hmm. Like after you build your base and you start adding in your flowers, just keep a couple of those on the side so that you can add those in into filler spots at the end. Because if you have used them all and then you're like, oh, I don't. I mean, you could order more, but (laughs) But you could also like, then you're having to shift things and move things and all that stuff. So keep a couple on the side, um, just so that you can kind of fill in and really complete the project completely. So, and the the last bit is if you would like to use like dried fillers, preserved fillers, um, especially dried, I tend to add them after the flowers have been entered. Like this is our pepper, pepper grass, pepper grass. Um, I tend to add them at the end because you're gonna be using glue on the flowers and stuff and like these can be brittle. So you wanna make sure they're at it at the end um, so there's less like contact with them. I'm gonna bring this up closer to the camera for you guys. Um, The one thing about preserved, a lot of the stems because it's Mm -hmm. an actual plant that has been dried, um, the stems get a little bit brittle. These, the foam in the holders is tough Mm -hmm. and so it's hard to get those through so you can stem these up with wire so that it's easier to get through and I'm just going to bring this around real quick and so you can see what we've done is we just and it's not a really big part of the stem either I cut it pretty short because in this particular greenery there is all these other little these kind of leaves on there and instead of stripping those all off I just cut it pretty short and then I just butted up my wire and then for some of them I even like did a little loop-de-loop on there and then finished it off with some vinyl tape, you're not gonna see this part. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't blend in. This is gonna be buried into your piece, so don't worry about that. If you want though, and it doesn't make you feel comfortable to have it that close to the base, if you have a little bit of a longer stem, start taping it down there and give it a little bit of room. But that's the way you can use those really fragile pieces or ones that tend to break a little bit easier um, in those types of holders. Yeah, okay. and the, the last bit I wanted to say about greenery is you can use greenery as double duty. You know, all the, the kind of things that we've talked about, you don't necessarily have to have five to, I don't know, sometimes I have 12 a lot. A lot. greenery fillers in there. You can, you can do double duty with certain things if you have a texture piece that's changing the color or bringing in some other some other colors like you can you can do multiple duties or double up on some of them. This is just kind of the way that has worked for me in order to to build out the way I want it to be. Yeah, so exactly. All right, I think that's it. I think Greenery 101 is over. We're gonna talk about the flowers for just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, and then we get to the fun stuff, which is the making. So hold on tight, let's talk about the flowers, and we'll get So now we're on to the flowers, and Maggie and I have picked very different kind of color stories, just to show again that you can use a lot of the similar, similar greenery, but tell a whole different story just by the colors that you pick for your bouquets. Um, so I'm gonna be using a flower um, mix that we actually, it'll, it'll depend. When this goes live, it might be in the shop, it might not yet be, but we're inter- introducing a new product line um, in the, they're just a really cool, fun diet assortment. So I'm using one of the new diet assortments coming. So the colors that I've got, oh, I just realized I pulled all of the paints multiple times. All right. That's what you do. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. You did it to show that there are different flowers in the same yeah, color. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. That's not what I did, but that's fine. Thank you. Thank you for the same. <laughs> so it's got like a deeper purple. We've got like a kind of a like creamy butter yellow almost. It's and the like lighting. Light gold. Yeah, the yeah. lighting in here is probably not what normally. So you're gonna just have to trust my descriptions on this. <laughs> um, we've got kind of like a periwinkle, like a light periwinkle. There's another yellow in there, and then like a really soft pink, like probably close to my favorite pink blush. And then just a slight bump up, kind of like a lighter peachy kind of color. And then I did grab some just raw flowers as well. I've grabbed Roman, which there's a lot of. And then I, we're both gonna be using, right? Yep. Teeny, teeny, Denny's. Just so you have some other little, little, little bits in there. These I would almost consider like a filler kind of thing to kind of pull everything together. Right. So that's gonna be my color story and yours. My color story is completely raw flowers. Um, I wanted to do kind of that classic, like, white flower greenery base. Um, which is also why you're bringing in that blush. Which is why I'm bringing that blush, just to add a little, little tiny little. pop of color, subtle. Yeah. Um, but the way I like to build my cascades is I always like to have a feature flower. So it's generally going to be the largest. This three and a half inch, I think, or maybe four and a half inch, not sure, but it is a blanche. 
um, beautifully spread out. I'll show you where we're gonna. And those are great left raw because they can oh. get a little bit tricky to dye. Yes. So, they can be a pain. Yeah, yeah they can. The only thing I've found that works for the most part, but it does still sort of unfurl, is spray paint. Yeah. Spray paint, or you can use the De Design Master Spray mm -hmm. if it's in stock. And if you're interested, we did a whole video on that as well. And I will try to remember to put it in the description. I'm here, so I should be able to remember to put it in the description. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> just comment below, hey, can I have that video you're talking about for, right. on curling flowers? Right. But since we're using a giant flower, and like Stephanie said, we're both going down to these teeny tiny filler flowers, I needed to kind of bridge the gap. Plus, at bring in extra textures, and just, there are a lot of flowers that I love. So, um, we also have Three Inch Louise that's gonna come into play. I just love her little spiky ends. That's a fun detail. Yeah, it's it's super fun. Um, we also brought in three inch budding lotus. Which is a really good deep flower to like really mm -hmm. nestle it in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, then some of our, uh, I also have, I went wild with the three inch ones. But they're different like angles. Thick and thickness and, or like fullness. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like this one's wider than it is deep. Yeah. Um, and this is our three inch Lafleur, which personal favorite of mine. My hands are giant, but it's not even gonna fit all of these things. Thank I'll you. Yes. You. Um, and then we have a two and a half inch dolly. Just a super like kind of dainty, one. fun little thing, but she dips dyes really, really well. well. Um, and then we did the 2.5, no. 2. it's Thelma. Is that 2.5? Or she might be two. I would say, I think she's two. We'll double check. But she's a smaller she's Thelma. A small Thelma. She might even be one point. Uh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's a small Thelma, but she's cute. And then we have the teeny tiny there we go. roses. So right. that's going to be my story. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to clear off our flowers. Whew. It's time. It's time. Are you guys ready for it? <laughs> you won't watch us. The, the, we may speed some We'll speed stuff. some stuff up. <laughs> Take, get your snacks and drinks again or refill if you already need to because this has already been quite a tutorial. Yep. But we're going to start building. That's the best part. So let's get to it. We're starting. <laughs> it is officially assembly time. As we're going to be putting things together, we're going to kind of walk you through like different ways to stem things just so you can see. Um, so we're going to start with our big flat leafy green like we mentioned, which is our ficus. Stephanie is holding up Sort of the piece is undone, but here is what the full bit looks like before it's been cut. Yeah. Literally, all we're gonna do for this first bit is cut at the base of each of the, the three flaps. That is your prep for that, okay? And then these are gonna be really the, the, the longest piece, mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. to help you start that process. Yes. So, um, one thing. As you, starting is the hardest part. Um, there, literally, we're going to shove some filler in here, and if we don't like it, if or you don't like it, you can pull it out. You can clip things to make sure the shape is the way you want it to be, but don't be afraid of this. Like, once you start and you get into a flow, you can adjust. That's the biggest thing I want people to take away is that you have the ability to adjust what you're doing when it comes to Which this. is why we're not gonna be gluing anything. We're gonna be adding in so much stuff and it's gonna start to crisscross. Mm -hmm. That glue is not necessary. It's also gonna make it easier for you if you want to adjust something. But because there's gonna be so much stuff being put in here, it's all holding it together. Yeah. Like at the end of this tutorial, I'll like do a little shaky shake shake. We'll both do shaky shakes. No, yeah, so for this greenery part, it's it's basically called the grid pattern, and we're not just going to insert everything from one side. Um, we're going to be going at different angles and things, and so like Stephanie said, it interlocks with inside, inside the foam, so you don't need to worry about glue. Also, it's going to look like a hot mess. Oh, first. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, as I say, very often, squint. It's going to get better. <laughs> just trust the process. Yeah. Just keep on going and it will come together. But yes, at the beginning, especially at the beginning, it, for a, for it's scary. I always like to say, it's gonna kind of look like a balding man for a bit. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's, you'll see, you'll see <laughs> as we go through. Okay, so the first step is 
to figure out how long you want your bouquet to be. Okay. So, um, you know, kind of take a step back, look in a mirror, grab your first piece of ficus or whatever your big leafy green is gonna be, and kind of look. Do I want it to be to my knees? Do I want it to be a little bit above that? And all of that is a personal preference. Exactly. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Build your cascade as big or as tiny as you want. Yeah, I usually go big, big. and beyond, um, but you can do yeah. whatever it is you want. We're both extra, extra, y'all. Yeah, but so for this first piece, I'm gonna try and for the sake of time, not go as extra, extra as I would. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably have it be, I would say that is gonna be the total piece because it'll go up over here. Um, it's gonna be somewhere in the 20 inch range, but I'm gonna cut off this bottom leaf because I wanna cut my piece. Oh, right there. Right here. And then we'll then do those for future projects. Yeah, little stems. Yeah. Now, so this one, would you start it this way? Or like, I'm kinda already holding it at an angle. I think you should hold it at an angle. And what you'll see is, I'm gonna, we're just gonna do this. So I'm gonna start, See how on the cascade there's like these little And those are usually holes. for like what? Like the ribbon or don't, isn't there other things you can use that for possibly? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> but for this what, one, for, this, for our purposes, purposes, we are we are actually, this is the only piece that's gonna be in that back area. And the rest at the end will cover up with leaves. But just to get us centered, we're gonna stick the piece dead center Oop. and just kind of nestle it in there and I kind of bent my stem. Like Stephanie said, the foam is tough. It is very tough. So you may, you may battle with it, but that's the great thing about um, wired greenery and filler is that you can bend it whichever way you'd like. So you're going in the back, huh? Yeah. But so mine gonna, also has those like So little... she has those back. Now you want to make sure it's angled. You want it like the way you want it to be angled. If you're using the rounded one, you're going to go straight through. And I probably cut. Yeah, so I didn't cut it all the way. Right. Yeah, so I'm just going to. And you can see you're probably going to want about like an inch or so of the extra stem that'll go up into the casket. Yeah. yeah. So here we go. Do you want mine to go down a little bit? See, you can just. Bend it a little bit. There yep. we go. And then this kind of shows you, see how you're going to be able to hold it and it's going to be kind of straight down? Yep. But it'll still be angled so it's comfortable to hold. Yep. That's the first piece. Oh, wow. That's the hardest one. <laughs> the rest is just. As you can brain. see with the way we both kind of were like uh, moving things around, um, that's the hardest piece. Now, what I like to do with these other two pieces that we got from our original ficus. Mm -hmm. You got the little side ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what I like to do to start off, and this is how we're going to start creating the shape. Now, as you can see, these two came from the same piece. So one of these little, see this little extra guy at the top? Yeah. One flows out this oh, way, yeah. one flows out this way. I like to keep that with the cascade. And I'm gonna go, oh, okay. I'm gonna go again in front of this bit now, but I'm gonna put it in to the side. So then the leaves are sticking out that way. Yeah. I wasn't lying. This is like my least of all of the bouquets, the one that I probably struggle with the most right. as well. And if you're feeling like, I would not clip anything just yet because you want to start building out your shape completely. So, yes, ma'am. Is that all right, or would you go up more because of the? See how they're like the same. I would scoot it in a little bit more. But what I was going to say is about the shape. If it's not feeling right right now, it's you're gonna, gonna be able to like. Like you could clip this one leaf right, off. Right, 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 right. And then once you clip that one that changes leaf the off, shape. it changes the shape. Got you. And another thing I do is if I'm feeling like the shape, like I want to bring in some extra drama, like let's say I'm like, oh, I want to go a little bit longer, you can 
add filler and go down a little bit deeper in the center. So that way, you know, you don't have to make any changes to the base you've created. You can just go over it or go a little bit behind little and bring in, exactly. Or you can even like extend another fight oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to go if you wanted even it. longer if you wanted that That's extra drama to it. I won't do it, I won't do it. You're, she's ready. We're gonna be here a lot. <laughs> Um, the next thing I'm going to do, because we want to bring this, now we have to, so we've got kind of the initial bottom shape, right? It's, it's sort of a teardrop, it may look a little like a, a shield right now, yeah. but we'll, we'll get that to be where we'll we want it to be, but we want to start bringing stuff here. Really right now what we're doing is kind of setting the boundaries, or the rough boundaries of, of the overall size of the bouquet. And again, we can finagle throughout. So I'm going to grab another one of those outside ficus guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're going to break that down a little bit more. Okay. Are you doing a short one? Okay, this yeah. One of the short ones. Um, FY, when you're doing this, like have lots of room because greenery is going to be going yeah, this everywhere. Yeah, very interesting. And <laughs> now what I do, see we have these two. Um, because we're going to the top next, I am going to cut it in between. So I've got this piece and I've got this piece and both have stems that can go directly into the bouquet holder. Gotcha. You're probably going to want to do two um, and we'll show that or we can even speed through doing the second one. But depending again on how big overall you want this. Keep in mind where you're gonna be holding it. Some brides will hold it up here. Some brides will wanna hold it here. It's really, that's also a personal preference. So depending on where you wanna hold it, pay attention to like, you know, if I'm holding it up here. You don't want it tickling. I don't want it to cover my face, but if I'm holding it down here, this is perfectly acceptable. Um, and also don't worry, if you're going Cascade, you're going, pretty big and bold. You are not going to be holding it the entire night. Do not be worried about it covering your yeah. dress. I don't want to say, and plus it being a, the wood flowers, the weight's not going to be The weight's not going to be an issue. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, you're not, it's not going to cover, like, if you want a big cascade, do it. Get yourself a big if cascade. If you want your flowers to be your statement, do it. More what, power to you. Whatever makes you happy. You can get pictures with and without. <laughs> just, just that just, little. Just leave just it. Just that little. PSA for the day. <laughs> Alright, I'm All right. the greenery. <laughs> so now, now as you can see, again, we have kind of this leaf is going out and this one's going up. We're just going to in front of the thing, stick it at kind of an angle into the top of your holder. And we're just once again setting boundaries. Obviously, you can see there's so you can it's like a divot right now. Um, but we will fill that out so it makes more sense. This is just to set those Boundaries. little spots. That's going to be our word of the day. Boundaries. Boundaries. Okay, so you're... And you that. can even oh, oh, oh. Okay. put this next guy in here. So like she's showing you guys and not me because I would have put it on the other side already and started working off that one. So, and then shape that a little bit. And then just start bending things so they fit in place. Now, another thing not to really worry about in the moment is if leaves are cover covering other leaves. If, because you want this part to be kind of your background and you don't yeah. want the big holes that you're going to have to fill with, like, you know, if you're using like a tiny or tiny leaf, you're going to want the space to be like the back. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right now, this is it's a hot mess, isn't it? Something. All right, now we're gonna grab another one of the small ones to do the opposite side. And as we mentioned, as we showed with the original um, piece that we cut, some of the leaves will go this way, some of the leaves will go this way. Find the natural flow with that, or you can make your own flow. I was gonna say that might be what happens with me, because I don't yeah. know which one's going which way. It's That's all right. <laughs> I'm just gonna but snippy snip snip if I have to. Snip. Do what you're do what you're doing. So I'm gonna have. I will say making a cascade if you're making it on your own because you're constantly like moving it this way and that way. 
having a mirror, yeah, is going to be really helpful. Just mm -hmm. to step back, look at it, see if the shape is the way that you want it, and then adjust and keep moving. But don't. Like me, I just put that leaf in backwards. If I had a mirror, I would have done <laughs> You could have also just twisted it. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dude, right now yeah. I could be Hello Dolly, so I'm a gladiator. I'm gonna, I'm gonna my... already be a rebel, and I'm already gonna be a rebel. Anyways, because I'm like I'm not liking how that. Yeah, no, and that's perfect. Whatever your comfort level is, like whatever is making sense to you, go for. It. Now and I'm already starting to like how we were talking about that gray pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm already starting to have like. I can already some it tight spots. Yeah. Now to make the grid pattern, um, so I just real quick um, have those extra pieces that are around, and now I just want to put one in the top. I cut from our tall center piece of the ficus, oh. and just some kind of centering this and pushing it towards the back and getting that in there. So we kind of have our boundaries. Um, and you know, honestly, what's gonna happen in the end, I'm probably clipping like these guys off. Yeah, yeah. And if you clip something off, like we have a piece over here, you can stem that up. Just a little wire at the bottom, a little tape, and you can use that yeah. throughout. Now, to make the grid pattern really work, um, you don't wanna just come in from the sides. You also yeah. have to come in from the front. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna want some of the ficus, now this is where I definitely am gonna cut it down smaller um, to start going in from the top. And that's just gonna look like you are putting in random things wherever you want. It's just like. But this is gonna create the. But that's the gonna help create the grid so that it's, it's interlocking those things so that they are coming from all angles and keeping things in tight. It takes a lot of greenery. It does. It does. I mean, but we're also clipping these in multiple different ways. Exactly. Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. So here, I am going to put one straight down in the middle. Straight down in the middle. Now, yours is flat and mine is rounded, so this might also create a little bit of an interesting like, mm -hmm. shape. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get mine way in there, though, because I don't I don't want him to... Hers is going to protrude like out a little bit more than mine, just because I already have so much kind of protruding out, I feel like. And then this is just... Chaos. Oh, then go at an angle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no kind of, I mean, you could be very strategic about the center part. Really, the, the you're not most gonna see a lot of it. You're not going to see a lot of it, um, but you are just trying to create that balance so that nothing shifts yeah. in there. Um, and so, this is the glue that's holding it. This, this is the glue, and it, it is kind of like, ah, what am I doing? It's fine. Trust the process, squint, it'll be fine. But at times we also are like, what uh, are we doing? All the time. <laughs> all the time. That's not the time. So just go until you feel like you have just a few in there. You don't need to go overboard at all. As Stephanie keeps clipping more ficus. I'm done with I'm done with my ficus. <laughs> I'll steal some of hers. I have a lot of ficus left. I, I don't you, know what's I, happening. I think you put more in your bucket than I, in my bucket. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's what's sure. happening. <laughs> Like, and you'll be able to feel when you get hit another, like if it's not moving. And so you gotta wiggle you know, a little bit or like take it out and move it again, up, like adjust yeah. a little bit. But this right. is also another boundary though, because this is telling you, this is as far out as I want to yeah. kind of go with me. So you guys, these two leaves over here. Driving you crazy. Woo, they're bad. We're leaving them for now, we're leaving them for now. Trusting the process. Just had a moment. I did have a moment. I did have a moment. All right. So this is the start. A lot of things, like we may come back in with more. We're probably, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to come in with more ficus after. But it's it's important to start incorporating in. things. Yeah. Yep. Because most of this is actually going to get hidden. So mm -hmm. we're going to just bring like we'll sprinkle back in a couple pieces afterwards. All right. And it's time. Time for. Seated eucalyptus. So the seated eucalyptus. Oh, can I tell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> the seated eucalyptus bundle comes to you basically like this with more of a stem. Yeah. You literally just pulled it and clipped for these main bits. Um, and these 
We'll show you how we're gonna add them. I do these suckers, you get these. We also, just keep oh, going, sorry. <laughs> we, we also cut them down a bit further in certain spots, yeah. um, just for little like extras. Um, and basically, this is gonna be kind of throughout with greenery. The longer pieces that you have are, you're trying to reach for like the bottom and the, the mid bottom. So like here to here. Um, and that's where you want the fullness. With the smaller bits, you're going to build out the top and this middle section. Yeah. Now, one of these was really long. Yeah, that's what I was. And I want that one. Is this guy? This guy. Mine's a lot. That's my longest one, but he's so sad and true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you. We, we don't. We don't need. We don't need happy. Because we, we bring it down. On it to we're drink bringing it down. Way. And I think both Stephanie and I want to elongate our just cascade a bit. just a little bit. So we're going to see. I want, yeah. Like that I is going to bring in our end point. Our drama. And our end point. Um, and I like to usually have the end point be one of the leafier. You yeah. can do it with the more textured, but you're going to need a lot of like small leaves to oh God, get that point the, throughout. So, this is all just part of the shove it in there. <laughs> so we are going to literally and I just bring it in and then go until you've got the length that you want. Layer your ficus over it like you'll start to see it become incorporated. Yep. yep. Um, and I'm going to, again, do that with the sides, but I'm gonna make sure that they are like at least an inch shorter than this longest bit. Yep. Again, because originally when we did the ficus, we didn't feel like we went as long as we wanted to. Um, and it's sort of just like helping to build out that shape of that teardrop. And I think Mine's probably gonna be a little bit more wild than normal, um, cause that's mine. So what I'm gonna do though, like when I put that in, like certain ways that the leaves, like this pulls it out this way, and I don't want that because we're actually trying to create more of a, a point at the end. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna switch it around so that it's actually tucking inward, kind of pointing in the direction of my, my teardrop at the end. And I did the opposite. Yep. Yeah. I went a little bit out because I cut it, like I cut another inch, two inch off of the base so it's gonna be up, and I wanna make sure like the flow is coming up and around. The other thing to note about these particular pieces of greenery is you can, it depends on the greenery that you're using, but these you can actually slag up. So yes. if you want a lot of greenery right at the end of it, but you want like a little bit of length that can get hidden in there, just slide that sucker up. Mm -hmm. And you've got your stuff, but you can get it down lower. Um, the other thing we want to talk about when it comes to cascades is there's a traditional, like, a very structured teardrop. There's a little bit more wild. It's just, it depends on the person and their definition and what style they're looking for. So don't think when you say cascade, it's like, oh, it has to be this, like, super tight cut crease kind of thing of a cascade teardrop. Right. Unless that's what you want. And then if you want that, you're going to... Um, be shaping it that way so that you get that. If that's structure. what you're going for, you know, you you will be manicuring, I guess yeah. is the best word. I, a bit more at the end. end. A hand, or like a haircut, you're gonna just kind of trim some, and it's okay to cut some of that stuff or like clip a little bit. So. Right, right. Just because it's on the stem doesn't mean it has to stay on the stem. Like, you can adjust things. Right, right. Um, and you know, some fillers have like set ends to them. If you note one that like, if you think if I cut this, it's gonna look weird. Like it doesn't have that tapered end anymore. Just cut it from the back. Yeah. Cut it like then. Then I would pull it out and readjust. If you do pull out a filler and you want to put it back in um, to that same exact spot, mm -hmm. then I would probably dab some glue onto oh, okay. it just to because the hole probably has gotten bigger. It's not gonna be as like yeah. tight. Uh, the foam's not gonna be as tight around your filler. Um, so I put in my longest again with the two out, and now I'm sure you guys can see this section is just, just killing me right now. 
And mine is the opposite side. Like I have a hole yeah. kind of there. Yeah. Um, so instead of going with the big ones, we're gonna go with the smaller I'm ones. I'm gonna start doing the smaller ones. Um, and we have some when you cut it down, some are more leafy. And then some when you cut it down have more of that like eucalyptus and like the, the little texture and little, little fun. Little seeds. Exactly, fun tapered. These ones with the more texture are probably gonna I'm gonna use for the top and to go out. Yeah. Whereas like these that are more Is leafy are truly gonna be like filling, filling out, yeah. filling in holes that you find throughout your piece that are driving you a little Making your eyes twitch or... Right, right. And again, because we're trying to create that grid inside the foam, you can go... At angles. At like, angles, and you can see if like there's a spot where you're like, it's not looking right, or I want to start filling this thing in. Just go for it. Yeah. Like, you know, a traditional casket isn't necessarily perfectly symmetrical. It just means that it's very balanced and has a specific shape. Organic means that... It can be a little flowy or you can have, as long as everything's balanced, don't worry about perfect symmetry. Don't let perfect get in the way of progress is what oh, we all say. That's a good one. <laughs> I won't say it because I'll forget it all. So I know, I know. <laughs> don't let yeah. progress get in the way of perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what is so, it called? The teamwork makes the dream work? That, that, no, that. teamwork does make the dream work. Oh, dream work makes the teamwork. Yeah, no. <laughs> True story. That happened yesterday. That, yeah. Happened very recently. Yeah. So as you can see, these leafier bits, I'm just kind of going where I feel the shape is like. Oh, I'm gonna use this one. A little wonky. And I'm going to actually some in between my ficus too, because I feel like I've got a, quite a bit of like this makes me more nervous sometimes than anything is seeing like all of my foam. And I know it's gonna all get covered. It's all gonna get yep. But I already start to like add little things in there to just make my yep my my heart feel a little bit happier and my anxiety level go down when I'm doing that. And if you are already starting to get nervous about, but how am I gonna fit the flowers in? Oh, girl, um, you'll be able to fit the flowers in. Don't we, you we got you. We got you. That's also another That's reason why we're not gluing. Is that one mine? Sure, you can have that. <laughs> um, because the glue, when it hits the foam, it doesn't go straight in. It expands out um, and covers the foam. So you're gonna have trouble getting anything in after a bit of doing it. Because yeah. we're going in different spots, it's kind of expanding out and covering a lot more. Um, and when you, so when we add the flowers, we are going to be gluing them in. So that's gonna spread over the stems that are already in there for the greenery, so it's going to help to hold all of those pieces in place. Um, and again, if you're like us, you're going to be like, ah, and and start to like move things around, and you're going to want that extra space to be able to do it. All right, I think we're going to start just we're going to focus on the for a little while. We're going to focus on this. All right, so we're probably going to stop talking and just start making and we'll probably speed this up for a little bit for you guys but right now we're just working once we introduce a new filler we'll talk about it yep. all right perfect so we'll get going perfect So one thing we didn't say about this section with the big leaves and the volume bigger leaves um, is that this is going to be a heavy portion of the work you're putting yeah. in. Yeah. This is going to be probably the biggest amount of greenery you're going to be putting in because... So when you're like prepping to... Like when you're prepping, your, yeah. As you're getting all of your greenery, focus big more flat stems leaves. on big flat leaves and, and like volume. volume. Yeah. The rest you probably only need, most likely, depending on the size of your... Cascade, I guess. Because I mean, we only used between the two of well, us. Well, we each used probably one bunch of each of the like, other things. You that probably we could use. definitely add more, though. You could add more so for sure. I would, and the stuff that we're putting in as our like uh, boundaries is the more affordable greenery, too. Yes. yes. So you can buy, like, feel comfortable buying more of that because if you don't use all of it, you'll be able to use it for another project or if you're doing an arch mm -hmm. or something else, mm -hmm. you're going to be using that same kind of greenery because you want sub because you're going to be using so much of it, you want right. to um, have it affordable. 
Uh, the rest of them, I think it's just like one stem right. of each of the different other like fun fillers and textures that we have. Um, you can always get more, but know that you don't I have think, to spend a ton right. of Right, I think between the two of us right now, we're going to be using, so let's say three to five ficus each, um, seeded uke, we're each currently at only one bundle. Yeah. Um, and we'll just see if we need to go run out and grab more. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll enjoy it. And we will measure these at the end. Yeah. To let you know how big of a cascade you can get out of the stuff that yeah. we pulled. I'll say the one bonus to doing a tutorial right here in our warehouse in North Carolina is to be able to just run out and grab more supplies than not me trying to see if I have it in the studio. So, right, right. Now. now you don't need to fill it up completely just yet. You're oh. still gonna have blind spots. Watch me. No. <laughs> Listen. Listen. It's not the way this works. Right. <laughs> and remember your grid. Yes. Sides. Do all the oh, do all the angles. Vogue it. And sometimes for the grid. I like to set it in the center, but then I'll just bend it down if it's sticking too far out. Because then you get your volume, you get your grid safety. And remember, and I'm taking over the camera so as we done. <laughs> and remember, when you're getting into that center, though, there is still a boundary there too. So if you keep putting, like, you put too long of a thing out there, you're gonna have this really big kind of bump out versus having it a little bit. It just kind of depends on the shape that you want, but if you really want a decent bump out that it really starts to move and groove, then start yeah. building out that way too. Yeah. So instead of just pinching it tightly on there, you're going to also wrap it with some sort of either vinyl tape or um, floral tape so exactly. that it all holds together for you. Exactly. Now these are three different sizes of bits. So these are the biggest. And those these are going to go actually kind of like mid. middle, bottom, if you can get it so that there's like, see how the leaves taper inside as well? Gonna, yeah, and I'm going to have to be careful. I don't want it to go out. Too, too far. far because I'm trying to keep a shape, so I'm gonna go more in that angle so that it's kind of it's taking your eye to go into that peak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the the 
most important part of like this contrasting color mm -hmm. is this is bringing like depth to your piece. Yeah. And it is going to help train your eye to or focus it's, your it's eye where to go. Where the exactly. Goes, yeah. um, now these bits that are kind of the medium, those are going to kind of start to push it out because again there is still a little bounce. Yeah. Um, so kind of out to the sides as well, like this mid section. Yeah. And then these little guys. These, these have bounce, but they're still sturdy enough that they can stand up on their own. So with those, would you, we're going to do a little bit here, but then probably hold on to a couple. Hold on a couple, because you might also want some at the bottom. Yeah. Um, where you don't want to have like a big... Probably after you put in the flowers, or would you do that before? Um, I'm just wondering if I that would, would be the for, to fill in possibly. Yeah, so uh, you can keep some to the side to fill in. Um, but we still have the the tribe. We still have a lot of things going yeah. on. I'd probably put most of them in. Okay. Um, but when it comes to the bottom, you're not gonna have a ton of flowers down yeah. there. So you want your bottom to be pretty much finished right. by the time you're going to add flowers. Exactly. Like you want the shape to be there and all that, because we're just gonna add small flowers to the bottom. Exactly. Hey guys. So I'm jumping in here because poor oh boy. <laughs> I knew this tutorial was going to be long, but I had no idea it would be this long. Um, it's a big one. So we've decided, instead of making it a two hour long tutorial potentially, we're going to cut it in half. So come back soon and we will continue the epic, let's just call it that, an epic tutorial all about the Cascade bouquet. So let's just wrap this up, just in case you're new around here. If you're loving this channel, can't get enough, want to know when the next one goes live, which will be the conclusion of the Cascade tutorial, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. To find out about the 150 style solo wood flowers, along with craft supplies and greenery, go to ovyourlovely.com. And that's not all. If you'd like to give the flowers a try, use the code YouTube30 to get 30% off your first order. Oh boy, that's a lot. Now let's do some fun, we'll just do a to be continued little graphic. Come in, come in right now. And we'll, we'll see you next time. I'm Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely and you my friends are absolutely lovely. Bye guys.